In lecture four, we're going to be looking at supply. Supply is the decisions by sellers about how much to sell at various prices. On the right, you've got a supply curve, and we'll get back to that particular example later on. It's the same example we were working through in lecture three about the Browns tickets. Uh, but our general findings are going to be that we have an upward sloping supply curve. What does that mean? It means that as the price goes up, the number of things that people want to sell goes up. Generally, as price increases, it becomes more attractive to sell, and so we expect the quantity supplied to also increase. As an example, to make sure that this makes sense, uh, let's imagine that you have a fishing boat. So you have a fishing boat that you keep docked at a, a lake or on the ocean or something like that. And on typical days, what you'll do is you will take a couple of your close family members out to fish with you, uh, but you've got options, right? And so you've got options like on any given day you could choose not to go out, uh, not fish at all. You could fish for longer, you could hire extra people to fish with you. So let's imagine, let, let's think about how that decision is going to go compared to the price of the fish. So let's suppose at first that the price of fish is really low. Let's imagine that's less than $2 a pound, let's say. It doesn't so much matter what the, the particular price is here, so much as the idea that there is some price that's just too low for you to go out fishing. After all, if you take your boat out, then you've got some wear and tear on your boat, you've got presumably gas that you need to pay for, you've got uh, other, other costs of going out and fishing, and so if that price of fish is very, very low, then it's not worth fishing at all. And so you would choose not to go out and fish, you'd catch no fish. And so what we're saying then is that when the price of fish is very low, the quantity you will choose to produce is zero. At some point, that price gets up high enough that it becomes worth it for you to go out and fish. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to use all of your efforts to fish, but you'll fish with the, the, in the cheapest way that you can. You'll take your couple of family members out with you, you'll fish in the uh, best fishing spots that you know, and, and so let's suppose that at that minimum price, you go ahead and you catch 500 pounds of fish. Now let's suppose you wake up the next day and it turns out the price of fish has gone up. It's gone up to $3 a pound. And you say to yourself, well, this is great. I could clearly do the same thing I did yesterday. That That's certainly a possibility. I could fish with my minimum crew for that minimum amount of time. That would be just fine. But the price of fish is even higher today, so maybe I can engage in some, o some other options. So you take on a few day laborers. You've got your extra crew, you go out for that same eight hours, but with the extra people, you can now haul in more fish. So let's suppose that's now 800 pounds. Okay, so that's great. You go to bed, you wake up the next day, and holy crap, it's the best day ever. You, you figure out that fish is going to go for four pound, four dollars a pound today. So you're like, well, I've got to take advantage of this. So not only do you take on that extra crew, but you keep everybody out working for even longer. Now, is this particularly efficient to do? Probably not, right? Because you're going to be fishing at times of the day that aren't ideal. Maybe you have to fish in spots that aren't ideal. But you get some extra fish. That extra fish, that extra 200 pounds of fish, is worthwhile for you because the price of fish is so high today. Now what we can do is we can take those uh, columns here and here and plot them together, which is what I've done here. So when the price is really low, below, uh, let's see if I can expand this to make, no I can't, okay. So forget about that, the uh, dollar amounts here are zero, 50 cents a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars and so on. So when that price of fish is really low, you choose to produce nothing. So as the price is zero, 50 cents a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars, you're still producing nothing until we get up to this two dollar mark, at which point we say, okay, now we can produce 500 pounds of fish. 
We've got our third point here at $3, we produce 800 pounds of fish. At $4, we produce 1,000 pounds of fish. So what we've done here is graphing these data in these two columns here yields our individual supply curve. This uh, graph showing the relationship between how much we want to produce and the price.